Okay, I think we can get started now. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. This is our introduction to Tiger Graph webinar. And before we get started, uh, we have a few housekeeping items. So everyone is muted right now, um, except for the panelists. And if you're having any issues with Zoom, you can reach the panelists via chat. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A as well, and you can um, ask questions at any time during the presentation, and then we'll answer them at the end. And to do that, you just use the Q&A button in the Zoom uh, menu. And we're also recording the webinar. If you have to jump off, we'll send it via email today, later today. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started by introducing our speaker today. So, Abby, I'm going to hand it off to you. Uh, thank you very much, Emily. Hey, everybody. Uh, Abhi here. I'm Director of Field Solutions at Tiger Graph. Uh, my, my background goes into machine learning, natural language processing, and I have worked in various different companies in graph databases and search engines capacity, worked at Bloomberg, Cisco, done my own startup in the init you know, initial years of my career. So um, after taking, you know, doing a little bit of stress thumping here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you directly into something that matters the most, and that is giving you the introduction about our company. I'll take a few minutes over here before we jump into the technology side uh, and walk you through the graph databases, what they are, why they exist. But to begin with, let me give you an introduction of what is Tiger Graph as a company. And we were started by Dr. Yu Shu in 2012. Uh, and it, it was industry's first and only native parallel, massively parallel processing graph technology. It's a native graph database, it's a highly parallel, and along with that, it is massively scalable too. Uh, along with that, we came out of stealth in 2017, and since then, the company has been growing. We have doubled in our sizes. Uh, our, our customer stack has been increased by you know, many, many folds. And, including companies like Intuit, Zillow, Wish. Uh, you can see many more on the second page. Uh, our technology is powering the top e-payment, credit card, mobile e-commerce, large pharmaceutical, healthcare sector, power grid companies, as well as government organizations. And here are the names to name a few of those. Um, now, the reason is that what is the time, why is the time so fit for graph technology to shine and for you guys to know about the graph technology? So to begin with, what I'm going to say that if you are thinking that you have not been using graph technology uh, or you are not aware of it, then it is not true. Uh, all the big companies out there, which we all see every day, which touch very basic part of or a very crucial part of our lives, are graph database companies underneath in terms of technology what they use. Social media, we also know them as social graphs, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And these graphs are used in these companies to analyze the relationship in social media. You know, we all remember that famous cliche that everybody is connected to everybody else in the world five hop down the line in LinkedIn. Similarly, website search, Google, uh, is built on a page rank algorithm, and this page rank algorithm is part of graph theory itself. Uh, on other websites like Amazon and Wish.com, various different uh, you know places we we all shop, do they do sell products to you? But the question is, how do they recommend you the the the, the product what you need to buy? You know, it's a uh, it's graph underneath it all along, whether it's in a customer 360 perspective or it is about your recommendation system, uh, which is used underneath it. So you use graph every day. It's just that many of us are not aware of that thing. Till now, it was very conceptual. But now let's get on to the technology part of it, at least the abstraction of the technology. What is a graph? Uh, in very basic terms, graph is a natural storage model for connectional data. It's a natural computational model for inferencing and learning, semantic model with asset compliance and real-time distributed capability. If you look at the right-hand side of your screen, you're seeing these circles and the lines in between those. These circles are called nodes, and the lines are called edges. Uh, in a 
RDBMS world, you represent your data or entity set in rows and columns. Uh, it's a very ledger kind of look. And when you are joining two of these sets together, you are looking for primary key and foreign key relationships. Uh, it is very similar in graph, but the difference is that the underlying technologies are not row and column based. It is not that you have to join the table. That's where the RDBM has start losing its performance. Uh, what we are doing is we hop from one memory location to another. Imagine a link list about your entity where this link list connects to another link list, which is a edge that connects to another link list, which is the, let's say in this scenario, a product information. So getting to a customer less than 25 years of age, buying a product which is less than $25, living in a particular zip code is not a foreign key primary key relationship of with various different joins. It's basically hopping from one memory location to another. So graph technology is underneath a various different, uh, is very different storage model with respect to RDBMS. And that's the reason why it can be thousands of times faster than a typical RDBMS. Now, making this uh, relatively simpler, a uh, similar model on the left-hand side in the relational databases, they have rigid schema, high performance for transaction. There is absolutely no doubt they're amazing in the transaction world, but the poor performance of deeper analytics. Imagine the example I was giving earlier, find me customer less than 25, buying a certain product, living in a certain zip code, until unless there are no primary key foreign key relationship, this becomes a big joint problem millions of rows turn into billions, and then you put a filter criteria on top of it to do these deep link analytics, and this is highly in-performant. That is why RDBMSs have their own challenges when being utilized in the big data world, and they haven't got much popularity in that area. To solve this relational database problem, you know, key value store came out, the NoSQL movement, uh, and as you can rightly see over there, they have highly fluid schema, at times no schema, high performance for simple transaction, but poor performance on deeper analytics. Uh, as the schema right now shows you that if you are hopping from product to customer to supplier to location, there is no direct connection between, between these entities over there. So it is not highly interrelated. Forget about getting deep link analytics. The very basic analytics have performance challenges when it comes to NoSQL world. Uh, similarly, on the right-hand side, we have flexible schema, graph databases, uh, high performance for complex transaction, and high performance for deep analytics. Uh, that being said, this is the very basic difference of why graph technology has been catching up in the world lately, uh, especially with advent of technologies like Tiger Graph. Now, this is the use case, you know, this is the case uh, slide where I have made the case for graph databases. Why would you need that? Uh, I will also show you later in some of the slides why some use cases are very specifically built for graph databases, what are the advantages of using graph theory, and also how would there is a possibility of just replacing the simple RDBMS applications. Now, till now, we talked about you may have used graph. We also talked about advantages of any graph database over any RDBMS. But the question is why there is a need for a new graph database in the market, which is Tiger Graph. And relatively speaking, it's not really new. Company founded in 2012, very stable product and gone through multiple release cycles. And with that, we call ourselves as a third generation graph database. So of course there were prior one, two generations also. Starting from the bottom left, the Graph 1.0 technology, which you see very popular in the market in the last 15, 16 years, won't name them, they are scale up technology. So you have 100 gigabytes of data in Graph database. You need higher throughput. You give 100 gigabytes of RAM. You, you want higher throughput, replicate the data and, and utilize it, uh, you know, multiplying your data, increasing the total cost of your ownership because that database is only scale up system. That's graph 1.0 technology for you. But what we solved is that we made a scalable for massive data set, hundreds of billions of entity, trillions of relationship that can go in a database because we have a distributed uh, graph database. You store your 
data distributedly and you process it distributedly. Imagine this as a distributed storage and Spark combined together, but in a graph database context, and that too native. Um, then there were generation two graph databases, which realized the challenge of the graph one, like Neo4j. And the graph two generation database try to solve that problem by keeping non-native storage. They will store information inside Cassandra. Data will be pulled back in to the memory, converted into graph database, and distributed across various different nodes, technically having a distributed graph. Uh, which is which is definitely improvement over 1.0, uh, but again, data is mutable. It's getting changed. Uh, it's changing minute, hour, daily, per second, many times in millisecond, depending on what use case you have. So uh, if you are keeping your database in Cassandra, uh, data in Cassandra, and every time you are building uh, and destroying a part of your graph in a memory, that's an inefficient process. So. Based on that, that's 2.0 generation disadvantage. We have created world's, world's first native parallel graph with a real-time capability. We have a sub-second response time for the queries touching tens of million entities and relationship. As you are pushing in millions of rows per second into your database, you're accessing it at thousands of queries per second out of your system. Distributed graph, distributedly storable, distributedly processable, and that to native. So no extra storage needed for your databases. Uh, it's not that we only run for million, billion, or trillions of nodes. Uh, another advantage with our native technology brings to you is deep lake multi-hop analytics. For example, let's say you want to go inside the previous example I was showing you, customer, his product, his age, zip code. Uh, his likings and you're going from one hop to another hop to another hop and you're making five, 10, 20 hops inside your database. At times you are not even aware how many hops you have to make. Uh, so data set might be smaller, a few millions or billions. You can use the same piece of hardware to go inside your data set multiple times and get the uh, equivalent performance. Of course, I cannot say a 30 millisecond response time over a billion two hop query is same, will be same if you do a 20 hop query. There is a, a bit of a performance loss, but that is still manageable because you're living on the same piece of hardware. Uh, ease of development and deployment. We have Graph Studio, it's a visual SDK. Always log in uh, to our visual SDK, you know, create your schema, load your data, end-to-end -end operation can be performed uh, right out of the Graph Studio, makes it very simple for learners product managers or various different people who want to manage the data set. Uh, for uh, intelligent, more intelligent and more ambitious uh, you know, developer community, not intelligent, I mean say more ambitious developer community and intelligent too. Uh, we have a G-SQL console, which can be run through our Linux shell. Uh, it's, a, it's our programming language used for loading the data, ETL processing, loading the data inside the system, running the query, accessing the information out of our systems. Uh, it's also Turing Compete language. Uh, and also we provide you with user extensible graph algorithm library. So you can use graph theory right from the beginning, uh, page ranking algorithm, community detection algorithm, similarity detection algorithm. They are all part of our uh, graph algorithm library. Uh, we are enterprise ready product. So we support your encryptions. Uh, we connect with your LDAPs and Kerberos, uh, every internal, you know, whatever security system you have in place. Some come out of the box. Uh, for others, we can talk with you. And based on that, we Another advantage we have is multi-graph capability. So I'm gonna talk about this multi-graph a little bit later. I have two slides for that. Uh, this is the advantage when you put, see this whole thing in perspective. Uh, it is very fair of us to say that since we take these advantages of disadvantages away from graph 1.0 and 2.0 technologies, this is uh, the third generation graph database which take care of scale, speed, performance, and of course it's enterprise ready. Now, let me give you an example of uh, scaling out of large graph. We all know tons of data, RAM is expensive. And when you couple up RAM with the high core machine boxes, uh, they are even more expensive. 
And if you have to replicate all that kind of data set, that doubles up, triples up, high availability, quadruples up your cost. So the whole reason why Graph 1.0 or 2.0 technology were struggling with the big data world was because they were not able to scale out. They were always scaling up, keeping this cost of ownership of the product inside the, the data inside the graph very expensive. So we have scale up system, of course, you can have more CPUs or you can have more RAMs and you can scale up the system or you can scale out the system. Now, the advantage of scale out system is that you can do much more on uh, commodity servers or lower end machines. So you don't have to own up very expensive boxes. So your ownership is much less in terms of cost and in terms of manpower. Here is an example of data size 6.6 .6 terabyte, 20 billion vertices, 95 billion edges. We loaded all this information in 4.5 hours on 24 machines, which are 128 gig, and they were firing 11 hop queries. They were going you know, node to node up to 11 times in 129 millisecond time with 2.3 thousand queries per second. Uh, this has been achieved on very low end machines. Had this been a scenario of a scale up system, just imagine how much of RAM you would need how much of single box would cost, and now you do a failover and high availability and imagine the cost what people have to bear uh, on a scale up system. So this is an advantage, an example of our scale out large graph databases. Uh, I have done a lot of uh, slideshow to you. Uh, let me take you to the real world. Let me show how our system looks like. So I'm going to take you to our test drive. So this is testdrive.tigergraph.com. Uh, please register there. It's a free registration and you will get access to our six demos. Uh, these demos are having five minute video each in front of them. Uh, this video tells you what this use case is about, what has been done, what has been expected in terms of output so that you understand the use case well. And then there is a live system. Uh, which you can try it. Some of them have billions of records that already loaded into the system. So when you are playing with this uh, and firing the queries, you are already sifting through billions of records inside of our system. Uh, use cases here are anti-fraud. Crunch base is a good example of enterprise graph. There is a social graph use case, which is more like a big brother's view of the world, uh, supply chain and healthcare graph. What I'm going to do today is we will, I will walk you through a social graph example and show you how our system works. So there are three ways to graphify your world in Tiger Graph. Uh, one of the way is of course of a Linux shell. That's you get you get the most of the rights. You know, administrative capabilities, user creation, uh, giving people access rights over the data sets. So uh, writing the queries, firing the queries. The second one is your application level integration. So when your application communicate with our database, they are going to do it with some kind of APIs and which are RESTful APIs in our case. Uh, you can use those RESTful APIs to send data in or access the data out. They are all connected with your security systems, tokenization is there. Uh, and the third one is what you're looking at it right now. It's called Graph Studio. Uh, Graph Studio basically comes in two different ed editions. Uh, one is Enterprise, another is Developer Edition. Developer Edition is free. Uh, so it's just not the studio, it's also the engine. So once you download our Developer Edition on our website, www.tigergraph.com, uh, you will be able to see and install this information on, on your laptop itself and try out with our product. So what you're looking here is a Graph Studio. You can design the schema. You can map data to the graph. Of course, the data lies somewhere else when you have to bring it in. You can load the data, because that's a very important part. Uh, explore it and write the queries. Uh, on top of that, there is import capability, export capability. You need your dev queue and production environment. Uh, so yeah, that can be done using import and export. There are administrative capabilities too. I won't go into that deeper because that's not needed at this time. So let me show you my graph, uh, social graph use case here first.
so what you're looking at is not a typical LinkedIn cliches of, you know, everybody connects to everybody else, uh, five, six hops down the line. This is more like a big brother's, brother's world of, uh, view of the world. Uh, we know here is a citizen and uh, uh, here are the attributes on the citizen. Uh, you can see that just like you have uh, RDBMS has columns over here. What you have is attributes, their strengths. Uh, we know citizens' phone number. We know who they have been calling over a period of time. We know the bank account of the citizen uh, or subject, and we know where they are transferring the money. We know what trains they took, what police cases are there, what hotels they stayed in, what flights they took, what transportation of buses what time they took and their home addresses. So we have lots of information about our uh, subject over here. And imagine this subject in your own use case. This could be a patient whose health records are interconnected like this. This could be a customer 360 angle. Uh, this, could be, this, this could be just an identity resolution graph. So in this case, this is more about a social graph. We have this information, we, we created the schema out. The next phase is of course, to bring data from external world into Tiger Graph. Uh, there are two ways of doing it. One is uh, the real world's view where we, we have connectors. It's all on our website. Uh, it's open sourced. You can connect with your Spark cluster, JDBC drivers, uh, and, and any other connector you may need, you can look up which connector you require and it's in our GitHub. Uh, or other way is right simple over here, uh, which is getting the data out on the CSV file. So here is one of my CSV file where I have all the train events. And what I'm doing here is, as I imported the CSV, it is showing me what are the columns on the CSV file, what are the sample data set, we have some inbuilt method for your filtering and ETL capabilities. We have lots of these methods when you do scripting using our loading jobs. But right now, this is the graph studio we are looking at. And over here, we have more than enough uh, filtering capabilities, con you know, concatenation methods and inbuilt method in which I'm joining two different inputs, converting into an output, and I'm putting it inside the transportation node. So this is the mapping which is done for each node. This mapping can be done visually, as you can see right now, or this can be done using our scripts. As you move along into the development, you are always going to prefer the scripts for when I mean, that's a developer's choice always. And once this mapping is done, the next phase is loading this data into the system. As you can see, the data is preloaded. Uh, this, uh, this is our test drive demo. So when you try it out, you don't have to load data. It, was pre it will be preloaded. Uh, you're seeing here, we're talking about 1.1 billion vertices, 2.2 billion edges, 10 million citizens, uh, sorry, 10 million home addresses, 40 million citizens, 50 million hotel room events. So we are talking about decent amount of data. I think this is about 100 gigabytes of uh, uh, data which have been loaded. And I, I'm pretty sure this was loaded well under 15 minutes. Uh, so once this data is loaded, decent size information, the next question is, what can we do with this? Uh, once the data is inside, our G-SQL is during complete, the question is, we can do whatever you want to do it in on, this, on this data. And that too at a, some unimaginable uh, pace. Uh, I'm going to do connection mining. So connection mining means find out how I, how X and Y are interconnected. So one simple way of connecting X and Y is that, uh, you know, we can check the phone records. Have they made phone calls together or they are interconnected? Have they transferred money or they stayed at the same hotel? They are interconnected. That is very simple way of finding connection. Uh, that's even no SQL or RDBMS can do. So why graph databases? Uh, most of the time, whether it's about fraud detection, whether it's about analytics use case or business intelligence, the data, the, the value lies inside the hidden patterns inside your data set of unknown depths. What does that mean? In simple words, I did a phone call to Mr. Y. Mr. Y did a train event with Mr. Z. Mr. Z went and had a hotel stay with Mr. A and Mr. A transferred money into my account. Now there is a circle in here, there is a loop in here, 
But the question is, how do this get interconnected? How is that even possible for us to go over billions of records for billions of entries and find these hidden patterns inside the database? That's where the RDBMS has their limitations with the joins and graph databases do not. So what I'm doing over here is I'm going to pick up one vertex ID and I'm going to say, go to the hop depth level six uh, and find the interrelated relation between these two resources, uh, these two these two subjects of mine here. Uh, billions of records inside the system. I assure you, there is nothing canned. Everything is going to get processed right now. There is no caching involved over billions of record sets on a very mediocre machine on an internet connection, which is pretty okay. And we rendered it over the browser and we are back in sub second time. I can say this query probably run under a 60 to 90 millisecond actually. And look how many paths they have found. These two guys are related. So here are my subjects, Jimmy Ray and Jones. They are related via various different paths. I'm going to follow this external path. Now see, there was, so of course we know uh, Jones has a phone number and phone number, they made a phone call with another phone number which belonged to Chi who had a bank transfer event with a transaction with another bank account that belonged to Wright that did a bank transaction with Warren who stayed at the same hotel with our subject, Ray. Uh, now if you see the path has been found the link has been connected, exposed pattern has been, uh, as, uh, the hidden pattern has been exposed, all under sub-second response time. This is for one resource, uh, this is for one entry, you can do it for 100, 10,000, 50,000. It's a parallel processing system. Uh, so just imagine the scale at which this system will run, function, and find all the relationship between your data set, doing better analytics, high-end business intelligence, uh, and way better data discovery for yourself. Now that is just the one angle of data discovery, finding the patterns and, and finding the paths. Let me take you through some intelligent higher end functions which can be done, which can be used during, uh, use, which can be done using graph databases. Uh, I'm switching on to another demo, which is about healthcare. And if you look at this schema, there is some schema. Uh, I will not go in detail on this schema, but what I'm gonna do is very simple case. Uh, here's a pharmaceutical company. Uh, here's a pharma company that reports a case to FDA uh, about a patient on which their drugs taken in certain sequence has created some reactions. Uh, here are the reactions. Here are the reported sources. This is by law they have to report it. This data set is called FARIS, FDA's Adverse Event Reporting System. So once, let's say this is your data set internally, you are a pharma company or you are any other company, you have some data set that's right over here and the, it's already preloaded into the system, 46 million vertices, 124 million edges. Now let's come to something very basic operation. Maybe, maybe we are doing some programming capability you know, functions over here or very basic data science work on top of this. Uh, data is interrelated, it's loaded. Now, over these hundreds of millions of record set, this company wants to know similar cases. What are the similar cases to one reported, the reported case that I'm doing right now? So, here is Jacquard similarity algorithm inbuilt into our method, uh, into our in, into our uh, graph database, which is in our GSQL programming language. Sorry for that fumble. Uh, what I'm going to do here is there is a reported case. Here is the case on which, based on similar reactions, what I am finding top five cases which are same to this case of mine. Again, hundreds of millions of entries. I'm finding similar cases, top five, show me quickly. Matter of milliseconds, performance is out, no caching involved over here. Now you have done the very basic data science operation on top of your data set. 
absolutely clean. Use this for your machine learning algorithms. Use this for uh, your any other further data science extensions. Or this could be just the end result for your analytical query on a business dashboard. 0.26087% similarity. This case, these two cases are similar. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you some exploration capability of our product. Remember there is explore graph over here. This gives you a very good view of uh, your data set and in nodes and edges. And I'm going to find, sorry, I'm going to pick up this case. Okay, I don't want five, I just want one. Sorry, let me remove that. Let's find this. Here is one reported case which is similar to the input case that I have given. So I'm gonna put these two side by side. Double click, let's explore these. Oh, if you look, these are the various different reactions to this use case, uh, to this, uh, and reported case, various different reaction. There are drug sequences. I'm going to go back, double click on this. And now if you look, has reaction has five or six overlap. Throat tightness, lip swelling, wheezing, cough. So these two drugs may be different, maybe same, I don't know yet have these many reaction overlapping. So that's why the 0.25% similarity based on, based on the algorithm which we were running. Right here, Jacquard similarity. Now, if you add other factors, there are various different edges, various different edges in this use case, maybe not just the reaction you want to capture, you also want to capture uh, what are the outcome, who reported it, was this a primary suspect or not? There are various different attributes and you can combine all of them together and you have a very easy to perform deterministic similarity algorithm. Uh, now, why many times people need predictive algorithm on the machine learning side? Because the data is so much, but the possibility of checking each entry with everything else is very difficult for them. And that's why a lot of predictive models are, are utilized uh, just to cut through that time, to, not to check everything with everything else. But over here, you have a deterministic approach, which can be done in sub-second time, just because of the graph theory, the way data is structured. So uh, with that, let me, let me move on to, uh, go back to my slides and, and discuss a little bit more in detail. So the question is what you can use graph databases for. Uh, the very first one which I showed you initially is that uh, there are advantages of using graph databases over RDBMSs and also NoSQL databases, especially with highly interrelated data set, you get responses very quickly. So better analytics, better BI. Uh, another factor is definitely our graph algorithm library. Now you do machine learning, you do data science operation, you know, machine learning has its own uh, game in clustering and, and all those other kinds of algorithms. Uh, similarly, graph theory has its own algorithms too. So if you are trying out, you know, doing machine learning AI, you should also try a graph algorithm. They probably will yield much better results much more sooner. So out of that, uh, we try a graph advantages and that's, that that side of the business is that it's native MPP design means faster execution. You don't have to wait for fetching data for your machine learning data science operation overnight on Hadoop, uh, something that can be performed, you know, hundred of times faster than that. And GSQL for design for analytical functions. And of course the open source and user extensible library, the community can help each other out on the graph algorithm side. Uh, out of the box, you will get various different algorithms. Please check for our website. The link is down there. We also have some uh, webinar series done on them. Uh, here are the examples. 
link analysis, subgraph discovery, pattern matching, hub and community detection, page ranking algorithms, and many more. They come out of the box for this. So this is the second usage of why would you like to use graph databases to try out graph theory and do much more quicker, smarter, intelligent execution on your data sets. Oh, sorry for that. Let me go back to the presentation mode again. I'm having a technical glitches. Give me one minute, please. All right, great. So uh, after these graph algorithms, uh, let me take you through another unique capability of multi-graph, which uh, no other vendor provides you on the graph database side. So if you look at those circles on the right-hand side, nodes and edges, uh, for us, a graph is a combination of those nodes and edges, but the graph comes on later after the nodes and edges have been brought into the system. So technically that means you can create many graphs on your data set and they can have shared information between each other. What does this mean? <clears throat> Let's say you're creating an enterprise graph. You don't want product department to see customers buying habits or their credit card information. So you create the, you, you pull in all the green nodes and the blue nodes inside your system and you separate out the other nodes for customer department. And now you can have different access rights based on your LDAP, Kerberos, or, or anything else. Like you have, we have six defined roles on the users of graph, uh, on the users of graph, um, query writers, administrators. So now the people on the customer department cannot see the product department's data and the IT department can have a bit of an overlapping among all of this, but they cannot see the green nodes. So in this way, in real time, you can have shared updates, but no copying. It's a cleaner, cheaper, faster way of dividing your data, dissecting your data, and still maintaining the security policies of your company. Now, why is this different from other companies? In most of, most of the other places, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, left-hand side, if there is a master graph and you are dividing it into various different graphs, you see all these black nodes, because they are part of product department, IT department, and consumer department too, customer department too, they are going to be overlapped. So what they are doing is dividing their graph and copying and replicating this data across the multiple nodes as they're maintaining the copies. But what we do is that this, we still maintain the single copy of your data, but we give you different access rights when the graphs uh, are utilized in a multi-graph fashion. So we are not maintaining different copies. There is still a single core copy uh, and that will be acted upon the rights which you provide uh, on that graph. So that's a very unique capability which our multi-graph brings to you. And that fits very well for our enterprise customers, especially who are bringing in data from various different departments or somebody uh, who have uh, you know, HIPAA compliance issues. Now, after this, uh, I wanted to share some of the use cases with you guys. Where, where would you like to use graph databases out of the box? We talk about typical RDBMS NoSQL replacement. We talk about G-SQL theory, uh, G, uh, graph theory in terms of high-end analytics and business intelligence. But there are some outright cases where graph is the only way forward. For example, anything related to the fraud is graph's use case. And it is well known in, the, uh, uh, in whether you're talking about financial fraud, credit card fraud, service fraud, telecom fraud, or any other fraud. And the reason for this is if, when a fraud has happened and you know the fraud has happened, all the data to detect that fraud is right in front of you on the table in your log files. 
maybe or in your Oracle records, maybe somewhere in your business access card logs. Data is right there, but the challenge is the path to finding fraud isn't there. And there are billions of ways how that data could have been linked together or, 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 or a hacker or, uh, or somebody or a fraudster would have used your system. Billions of ways possible by connecting the data points and got into the system and access it or, or break it. Now, what you need over here, just by very nature, I was showing you go five hop, 10 hop, 20 hop dimes, find me how these two guys are interrelated. When I showed you the graph example in the social graph use case, that applies in the fraud use case quite a lot. You give us two entities, give us all the data set and tell me how these two are related. And right in front of you, depending on how much data you have and the depth you have, the interlinks will start emerging. And now you have a better way of starting your fraud detection process at least. At least you have a better way of starting where the fraud could have happened because you have interlinked between all your entities. So frauds are very strong use cases for graph databases. Similarly, real-time recommendation system are very strong use cases. Uh, you know, typical recommendation system is based on collaborative filtering algorithm. And if you have seen what you have watched today, it will be sh you will be shown similar movies on Netflix overnight <laughs> uh, next next day because it takes a while for for all of them to calculate your likes and dislikes. But if you talk about graph algorithms with all these wonderful calculations, they can be done very quickly, very fast, right using the graph databases itself. Uh, similarly, healthcare is a very big use case. We are talking about customer 360, whether it's about patient 360, healthcare 360, financial 360, everything related to 360 is a very strong graph use case, uh, especially when you're dealing with huge sets of database, data set, then it's a graph use case. When you are merging together many different data sets, um, uh, external data sets, whether they are internal to your company coming from different silos or they are coming from external vendors, uh, then graph is a very strong use case for re resolution of the entities. Uh, and again, you know, my market trend, direct advertising. So this is related to the healthcare sector. So healthcare is pretty big on graph uh, as of now. Similarly, IoT use cases are very strong on graph because there is tons of data and this data is changing either frequently or infrequently depending on the case-to-case -case basis. Here is an example of real-time grid, real-time uh, energy management system where based, where the power, where the, where the load on, uh, so the model power system using real-time operation graph to accelerate state estimation and power flow calculation. So all idea over here, overall idea over here is that the energy systems are complex. Uh, it's a complex infrastructure and you want to manage and detect the power overload and the outages which could happen. Maybe at a system there is a huge uh, overload going on so it can fail. So there are some equations in place for various different industries. And in, in energy, manage, energy management system, these equations are often called state estimation, power flow, uh, contingency analysis. So when these companies, one of our customers, State Grid of China, when they were using commercial EMS, energy management systems, their state estimation times were coming out to be, you know, four seconds, five seconds. And we brought it down to millisecond, like probably tens of times, twenties of times slower, faster than what the commercial systems were giving you. So uh, any IoT use case is a strong graph use case. So what I would suggest uh, as I'm nearing to our Q&A mark is that please try out our product. It's very simple. There is a community edition available. Uh, we have a developer portal where you will get answers to your question. You can use our chat service also on the website. Uh, download developer edition or 30 day free trial on your enterprise. And the link is given over here. You will be provided with the link also in the email. Uh, enterprise edition, developer edition, differ in two ways. Developer is fit for running on your laptop. It is not about distributed processing. You cannot have multi-cluster. There are 500 billion entity limit uh, on the developer edition, but in nutshell, this is too powerful for any laptop. So you can, you can start with that. And of course, there are scripts available for various different use cases which we have on our website and please join our developer forum 
for more information. There are follow us on Twitter, YouTube channel, also have lots of videos on Facebook and LinkedIn.